in a way, the defenses have been breached. They need to be shored up. And look, we all want to see World of Warcraft, well, go on the attack to regain lost ground, to win people back, because that would mean a good game for all of us. But the only way to really do that is content. That's patch 9.2 and the next expansion's job, not 9.1.5, no. This is a defensive patch. It's one that's focused mostly on repair. Now, if it represents principles learned, then that does bode well for patch 9.2, as its content must be set free from bad systems. So yeah, 915 can't compete with Endwalker. No patch like it could. But if its lessons learnt actually set 9.2 free, and that sets 10.0 free, then perhaps we can have two games with large, happy communities. And wouldn't we actually all love that? So today we're going to engage in good faith. We're going to work out what principles are on display and what 9.1.5 must mean. 9.2 if the lessons have been learned. The friction of my Shadowlands experience really did damage my desire to play it. My Hunters and Night Fae, the rewards and gameplay of Kyrian though also do appeal to me. In 9.1.5 I'll be able to instantly swap to a Kyrian with zero penalty. I'd be able to do some Path of Ascension, which, by the way, thankfully, is actually being worked on, though a bit more may need to be done, but I can do that. I could unlock a few of their sets, which I think look pretty nifty. Then, if I wanted to go back, well, I could switch back to Night Fae before Raid Night. Is that not a tremendous improvement in the playability of the game? I, you know, if I wanted, I could do the Carrion campaign. That's an example. There would be no worry about repeating that uh, content on my alt as well. If I did a new alt, that would be a Kyrian, because alts can skip the campaign if another character on your account has done the campaign, and they can also get a renown boost. Well, that's one example here of the game being significantly more playable. The Path of Ascension and Resonating Arrow, those did not exist in my World of Warcraft. Now they do, along with what the Night Fae have, and that is just better. So for existing mains, 9.1.5 makes the launch content of Shadowlands accessible, such that it's went from may as well not having existed, to actually being a thing I feel I can go and do. It's better. What of alts then? Well, more intro skip. Good. Enhanced Threads of Fate leveling. Uh, potentially good. Right now, Torghast leveling is weak outside the daily quest, and the other rewards are kinda tiny. Heirloom gear is back, but it's super expensive, and the new heirloom design really isn't that powerful. But if further work is done, alt leveling could be far, far, far better than it is now. I mean, it's a bit better in 915, but they could push it a bit harder. And then Corthia, while not fun, really for me, is being made more bearable, with 915 speeding it up. So the alt changes are okay, they're not fantastic, and other than having some alts for the Mage Tower, I don't really care about them that much. Especially now that I can get the rest of Shadowlands on my main. That means I'm happy enough, and with the WoW gearing and progression systems, uh, you know, they're not really good enough for, for me to do them in alts or want to, I'm happy to go do that content in my main. But still, if you want to reroll, it will be easier, especially when you can get that instant renown boost to 40. So what can we learn from all of these defensive plays? Well first, Blizzard are beginning to understand how expansion-wide progression systems, like Renown, can end up being a major barrier to alts. Their changes to Soul Cinders and Soul Ash, making the Ash tradable and now increasing the quantities of both of them that you earn and making them a lot more farmable, well those things under show maybe an understanding that weakly gated things can kind of suck both in mains on alt, so you should do those things carefully, lest they feel like a weekly chore rather than a thing you can do. You know, they may have tricked you into thinking that the barrier was a reward initially, like, oh, I got my weekly thing, but then that kind of wears thin sometimes. Now also, alts gain renown faster. They also can get soulbinds faster if your main has done that. Again, that shows something about those big character progression systems that are tied into the borrowed power and the downsides they can have over time. Uh, thinking about the Cinders and Ash, well, those are now fully refunded in the new Legendary Recycler. 
That is showing that Blizzard understands that the destruction and the sort of fear of misallocating a weekly gated resource is a bad thing because it devalues players' perception of the time that they spend in the game. And you don't want to train them to think like that, do you? Legendary drop rates are now 100%. Maybe that indicates that they understand that it's playing with the toy box that's fun rather than finding your toys to put them in the box. Changes to the group finder UI maybe show that they're starting to think about usability of some of these things from the player's perspective, not just ticking a functionality box, going a bit deeper to the usability of the function. Now, these are almost all defensive plays, things that shore up weaknesses. Will that change that, for me, Corthia is pretty weak, that I think Torghast could be a good bit different and a good bit better, that domination shards are not a fun system, and that the Great Vault's impact on gearing is something that I do think damages the game. No. And I do still worry about those things, of course, because I haven't really seen changes repudiating them. I mean, the shards of domination drop more often, but why not let us buy them directly and perhaps engage with the system? Indeed, a brief glance at the plight of the PvP players does reveal a deep satisfaction with the Renown upgrade gate and some of the implications of the bracket-dependent upgrades. So there's things there. That's just to say, make no mistake, problems do exist, but lessons have been learned with legendaries, covenant progression, covenant lock, alt-friendliness. I think they have been learned. To the broad game, we've then seen minor Legion raid tweaks, all for soloing for Transmog. That's something that, uh, along with the pivot towards more customization options for player characters, perhaps shows the Blizzard are thinking about a little bit more than just the three end game pillars. And that is good. So there is a lot more work to do. And I hope 9.1.5 has more in it than when I have, you know, sat down and done this video. But it is shaping up to be a very, very strong defensive patch. And that is a good thing. Of course, there is a little bit of offense in it. Legion time walking is just great. We get to relive some fun dungeons, and in a way where they'll actually feel relevant. Does this show that Blizzard has an interest in pulling content out of history's dustbin, and perhaps a realization that perfect balance be damned it's actually a good thing for that content to be relevant at Endgame. Because I think for many people, Legion Time Walking will be a lot more exciting than any other Time Walking. The Mage Tower, then. Artifact, weapon, appearance, disagreements aside, and those do exist. The Mage Tower shows they understand that people liked the tower's gameplay. That it is good gameplay. It shows that their understanding that more game features should be evergreen, should stand to World of Warcraft for far longer than their patch or expansion, and that is good. It shows their thinking about how they can use implemented but unobtainable game assets as rewards for people. That's good. If anything, this shows the power of scaling, of course something that Final Fantasy XIV is able to use to great effect. Within the bounds of a small systems patch, this is great. Yes, it's not a new piece of content, but what about the principle Blizzard have learned? Will that be applied? Because if this truly means a principle has been learnt, then, for an example, could we see the return of old raids, like Throne of Thunder, but with proper difficulty and proper loot rewards. The return of Warlords of Draenor and Mists of Pandaria challenge modes. Perhaps a scaled version of Warlock Green Fire, but with a unique achievement for defeating it when it's a hard encounter. If we dare to hope that all of this stuff shows the principles have been learned, and screw it, maybe I will, then what does this actually mean for a patch 9.2? If a principle is learnt, then surely that principle will be applied consistently moving forward, assuming similar context. So with that in mind, I think this is what patch 9.2 should look like based on what Blizzard are communicating to us via their 915 changes. The new catch-up gear system should be slot-based. I'd add, ideally not inheriting currency from a previous patch like Stygia. Based on the changes to the Archivist's Codex, 
Perhaps we should expect more reliable rates of progress in that patch. Perhaps we should expect that our alt characters will be able to enjoy accelerated currency gains once our mains have reached a certain progress threshold. We should expect achievements to be a bit less reliant on randomness of content rotations, as evidenced by the latest Covenant Assault meta achievement hotfix that Blizzard implemented. We should expect a 9.1 campaign skip for alts if a main has already completed that campaign, and the same should go for the campaign of patch 9.2. While 9.1.5 then does not trivialize the Shards of Domination acquisition, it does increase their drop rate, and they did loosen the set bonus activation requirements as well. So if we were to apply that to patch 9.2, does that mean that there will be fewer points of failure in that system? Fewer, you know, linked, if this drops, then kind of conditionals that get layered on to the player's path to their desired goal, such that the sort of bell curve of, you know, players that have a positive, happy experience has got less people at the extremes that don't have, well, you know, that don't have a big, happy experience. This could be old school tier sets coming back as our new thing, exactly as they were, or it could be effects that are reliably earned and then applied to your character in some sort of simple fashion. That would be a way to grant a bit more flexibility and maybe Blizzard, uh, you know, let them do a specific effect that can maybe lean towards either M plus or raid for a, for a spec. Uh, but either way, more simple, fewer points of failure. A reduced chance of creating a negative player story and more of an emphasis on the fantasy offered, the fun gameplay offered. Continued progress of things like conduits, based on the changes they've made over the last while, those should be targetable on at least a loot spec basis. An instant catch up to Renown level 80 should be obtainable once Renown level 100 is achieved, assuming we get 40 more levels of Renown in this next patch. Soul Cinders should be tradable to alts from the get go. If Torghast is to get another currency, then, as evidenced by these cinder changes, well, that currency in 9.2 should drop far more frequently at launch. Though ideally, honestly, I think a far more simple upgrade path via, you know, raid, open world content, myth plus, and PvP would be a bit more ideal so that maybe Torghast could receive uh, sort of gameplay enhancements and maybe, uh, you know, sort of twist and quarters revamp and maybe make it so that it's not Torghast, but I guess that's a content suggestion. That's kind of out of scope of this video, uh, isn't it? But you get my point. This is all looking at the changes of 915 and thinking to ourselves, if those are applied evenly, and those are lessons learnt, then the start of 9.2 should look like this. Based on the Mage Tower then, any new challenges that are secondary to the three core pillars of the game, those should ideally be designed with evergreen replayability via smart scaling in mind, as of course evidenced by what we've learnt from this Mage Tower change. And finally, we should expect to see the excellent positive change in team communication continue to happen and continue to improve, because their patch notes have been better. Their general comms have been better. As you can see, a patch 9.2 built with the codified principles of patch 9.1.5 from the get-go would be vastly more playable. So whatever content is there in that patch, it can be enjoyed to its fullest extent. That's what I want to see. There's a lot of changes happening right now that are what players have been saying for ages. What I need to see is for principles to be learnt and to be applied from the start of patch 9.2. I hope that Blizzard understands that patch 9.1.5 is not offering accelerated progression or catch up for people who are coming to the 9.1 content too late. I hope they understand that 9.1.5 is fixing 9.1, and that 9.2 should ship as if all of those fixes and all of that problem solving has already happened, and be as good as it can be from day one. And I think if those principles have been learned, then it should be so. So there you go. This is really what I'm going to hold them to for patch 9.2. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you understand the importance of learning principles to be applied evenly into the future. 
I suppose with that, I hope you have a great day. Let me know if you have any thoughts. And I'll see you next time.